Welcome to uh, Focus Today. I'm your host, Perry Atkinson, and I want to welcome back to the program. It's been quite a while. Scott Feltman's back with us today. He's the executive vice president of One Israel Fund, and you can go to oneisraelfund.org is their website and check out uh, all the things that they do, oneisraelfund.org. Scott, good to see you again, friend. How are you? It's always a pleasure. Doing well, thanks. How are you? Good, good. Well, listen, uh, I understand that you have known Prime Minister uh, Bennett for quite some time there in Israel. Uh, tell us about that relationship and what do you think of him? So I, I met uh, Prime Minister when he was the director of the Yesha Council. That's um, going back about 15 years ago, I believe. Uh, Yesha is the is the acronym in Hebrew for the communities of Judea, Samaria, and what was once in uh, in Gaza. So uh, that's when I met him, because in my professional capacity, that's what our organization deals with. Um, and we've had a close relationship ever since. Um, you know, I haven't, uh, I, because of COVID, I haven't really been able to travel as much as I'd like. So I haven't really spent too much time with him of late. Uh, but I know him to be a, you know, a straightforward and honorable man. Um he recently met uh, with the royalty there in Bahrain. Um, what's that all about, and what do you think of it? Well, obviously, it's an outgrowth of the Abraham Accords, uh, which was the historic uh, peace agreements that were signed at the end of the Trump administration between Israel and Bahrain and uh, and the UAE um, and Oman and uh, and the Arab world is really, you know, finally coming to a realization after uh, seventy some odd years that Israel is a partner for peace and, uh, and, and, not, uh, and not a pariah nation. And um, the, the historic signing of those, uh, of those Abraham Accords has really uh, changed the whole dynamic in the entire Middle East, uh, from Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. on down. Um, we know that it's out, you know, to some extent, it's an outgrowth of the, of the tensions with Iran, but it's also developed into so many unbelievable fruitful opportunities between the nations um, in uh, economics and agriculture and education um, and commerce um, and the historic visit by Prime Minister Bennett to the to the Kingdom of Bahrain was was really just building on the successes that we've seen over the past two uh, two years. So um, it was it was wonderful to see. Um, it was incredible to see the two the two leaders sitting together. Uh, peacefully talking about how important it is to to move beyond the tensions that have existed in the world, in that part of the world, um, and bringing opportunities, uh, wonderful opportunities to the people of both nations. So what I'm hearing you say, Scott, is that uh, the accord is very strong. It's holding in spite of what has happened in Afghanistan and that the United States is reconsidering the sanctions against Iran. The accord seems to be strong anyway. The accords are strong because they don't, I mean, look, it, America was very instrumental in, in brokering the, the deal. Um, and we have tremendous gratitude to, to President, former President Trump and, and Jared Kushner and his entire team. Um, but the nation, you know, the, the, the accords are built on a, uh, the realization by some nations in the Arab world that Israel has much more to offer uh, to the benefit of, of of the kingdoms around them, than uh, than it ever did as an enemy. Uh, and even though Bahrain and, and Israel, you know, never fought a war, uh, there was certainly no love between the nations uh, until the Abraham Accords, or at least leading up to the Abraham Accords. And uh, and you're seeing not just the nations that have signed the agreement, but other Arab nations as well are starting to look at Israel very, very differently um, as a leader in the in the region when it comes to the tensions with Iran, but also as a leader in many, many industries um, that can have tremendous benefit to uh, to the entire region uh, in working as partners for not only peace, but also to better the lives of, of the people living throughout the region. Um, Israel is a leader today in, in biotech and, and, and medical advancements and education and agriculture and has so much to offer. Um, I know that uh, the former Prime Minister Netanyahu opened up many, many doors in Africa, uh, which are not really talked about because Africa nations weren't necessarily you know, enemies of Israel as far as wars being fought. Um, but, you know, everybody takes notice of what Israel has been doing on a global stage. Um, uh, and 
it's 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 an outgrowth of that that finally these nations in uh, in the Middle East have realized that they they can gain much more by being on friendly terms with Israel than than remaining as uh, either outright enemies or you know or at least you know cold uh, cold cold partners. Do you think um, other nations will join the accord as Iran continues to grow its nuclear uh, project? So it's interesting. I was reading an article yesterday in the JNS uh, written by a professor uh, from Saudi Arabia who was just talking about this very, very uh, concept. And even though everybody knows that the, 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 big, the big fish in the pond is Saudi Arabia, uh, it's not going to happen overnight. But the relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia have definitely thawed. Um, and there are many different things going on behind the scenes where they are working together um, to to counterbalance Iran and the Houthis and Hezbollah and, and Hamas. Um, and, you know, as Saudi Arabia goes, so do the rest of the nations. So you will start to see other nations uh, I, I can't tell you if they're going to sign documents, but certainly behind the scenes working in close partnership with Israel. Um, and ultimately, I do believe that at some point in the not too distant future, we will see uh, peace with Saudi Arabia and, uh, and, and many other nations in the region. At the end of the day, and Saudi Arabia can't allow for a nuclear Iran, right? Correct. You know, the, my, the, 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 the what, what's the saying? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. So, um, you know, Saudi Arabia fears Iran much more than they fear they've ever feared Israel. Um, Iran is the largest state sponsor of terrorism in the world today. Uh, they have proxies uh, in, in many areas throughout the region. Um, and those proxies are actively fighting against Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia's interests. So, you know, Saudi Arabia realizes that Israel is a tremendous deterrent to, to Iran. Um, it's probably the strong, you know, Israel is probably the strongest nation in the re in, in the region. Um, and no matter what is ultimately done in Vienna with uh, this renewal of the, you know, the accords with Iran between the P plus five, um, Saudi Arabia realizes that Israel is 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 really the best bet to uh, to, to deter Iran in its in its hegemony of taking over uh you know, other nations, including Lebanon and, and Libya and Yemen and uh, and so on and so forth. So, you know, there's a relationship there that's built on mutual interests, uh, but hopefully it'll go beyond that and it will, you know, it will it will lead to a friendly um, and productive relationship for many years to come. What did the nations in the accord think of the United States handling of Afghanistan? <sighs> You'd probably have to ask them, but I don't think anybody could be, you know, could be thrilled with the way everything turned out. Um, Afghanistan was always a difficult situation. We know that, um, but I'm, but I'm sure, you know, the nations of the world, seeing uh, how 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 the evacuation took place, couldn't have given them much comfort, uh, you know, in in in, in going forward. Um, but you know, America is still the strongest nation in the world, and uh, there's there's you know. That's not going to change, and they still need to maintain those relationships with America. And you know, as a proud American who's living here, um, I, I don't see that changing much. But you know, not every not not every decision that's made is the right one. Um, but uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we'll go beyond that. I'm hoping that this whole thing in Vienna right now uh, will ultimately be much ado about nothing, uh, because I, I don't believe that signing any agreement with Iran is going to be productive. Um, I think Iran is on a fast track to attaining a nuclear weapon um, and, and for that purpose, for weaponry. So hopefully everybody will come to their senses and realize that, you know, any agreement that allows Iran to maintain their nuclear capabilities and to build upon that uh, is, is to the detriment of the entire world. Do you have any idea where that line is? I mean, every time we hear about Iran developing their nuclear program, and even now with the United States considering uh, lifting the sanctions that could accelerate that, uh, the former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu did a very descriptive thing when he came before Congress and drew the line at the cross at the top. Uh, it was very visual. That it's very close. And I can't imagine that Israel is going to allow it to go much further. It's hard to imagine that they would. 
Um, you know, Iran is on a fast track, and uh, there's there, there's different there's different opinions as to how far out they are, uh, but it it's it can't be that far. You know, in 2015, when they originally signed the agreement, they weren't. You know, they were certainly on the on that path, and we're now seven years later. Um, you know, it's it it's it's trying times right now, and it's going to be interesting to see the decisions that Israel makes. Uh, but more importantly, it's it's going to be interesting to see the decisions that Israel makes with its newfound partners, um, who are equally, if not more, afraid of of, of a nuclear Iran. Um, and to have a nuclear Iran in that area would create a an umbrella effect, which would um, you know insulate all of Iran's proxies from any kind of deterrent. So. You know, we've, we we have to take we, we have to take drastic measures before that becomes a reality. Um, how that happens, that's beyond my pay grade. <laughs> how would you rate Prime Minister Bennett's relationship with the current administration in the United States? So I, I, I think it's more than just Prime Minister Bennett. You have Prime Minister Bennett, you have uh, Foreign Minister Ayala Lapid. Uh, and the entire new government, I think that they they made a conscious decision to uh, reach out to the to the Democrats in power now, um, and have tried to rebuild that. Um, it really remains to be seen because you do have a lot of you have I don't want to say a lot, but you have significant factions within the Democratic Party that I don't care if it's Prime Minister Netanyahu or Prime Minister Bennett. Uh, do not necessarily view Israel as as the ally that was always, you know, taken for uh, taken for granted by the Democratic and Republican parties uh, when I was growing up as a kid. Um, so, but you know, pri President Biden um, has has always been, you know, more you know of a pragmatic uh, politician, and I'm sure he understands all of the nuances of the race relationship that uh, that Israel not only. Uh, receives from America, but more more importantly, and people don't realize this, but gives to America um, in intelligence and and many other areas. So I know that Prime Prime Minister Bennett has made it a priority in in, in the current you know current government to to rebuild the ties with the Democratic Party. Uh, it remains to be seen how successful that's going to be, because like I said, there's a lot of progressive voices today in the in the Democratic Party that they don't think value the relationship with Israel as much as uh, it did maybe 15, 20 years ago or more. Give us an update of One Israel Fund. How are you doing? And for those who don't know, what do you do? We're doing great. I mean, you know, it's been a tough time for any organization over the past two years with COVID, but uh, we've been moving, you know, moving forward steadily. Uh, One Israel Fund, for your, uh, for your viewers, was founded right after the signing of the Oslo Accords in 1994. Uh, specifically to help and support the growing communities in the biblical heartland of Israel. Um, we call it Judea and Samaria. Uh, the world likes to look at it as the West Bank, uh, which is really a misnomer. It's a Jordanian term when, Jordan, when Jordan illegally occupied the area. Um, and we take care of humanitarian projects for those communities. It could be high-tech security to prevent terror. Uh, to medical, you know, medical equipment, to uh, recreational equipment for children and educational needs. Uh, and we've been doing it for the past uh, 28 years. Uh, our flagship project right now is building a brand new state-of-the-art medical center in the northern Jerusalem suburbs of Binyamin, uh, the Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin. Um, so there's no, med there's no quality medical services in that area. We for about 200,000 Israeli citizens, um, as well as the local Arab population who would certainly value an Israeli medical center over what they have currently as well. So this medical center is going to transform not only the area for the Jewish residents, but also for relations between the Jewish residents and their neighbors. Um, but we continue to do everything we can to allow the families there, 500,000 strong in all of Judea and Samaria today, to live productive and fruitful lives and to remain safe and secure in their homes. All right, check it out. It's uh, oneisraelfund.org. Uh, there's a picture of the landing page. You can get involved and support them, oneisraelfund.org. And uh, go there and learn more about their operations and support them. Scott, good to see you again. Thank you, friend, for your time. We value it greatly. Let's stay connected. 
Harry, it's always good to see you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.